Um, and I'm going to introduce two of our early adopters. Uh, I'm going to first of all introduce Nicola Simmons, who is an assistant professor in the Faculty of Education. She was a recipient of a 2017 3M Teaching Award. 2016. Yes, 17. 17, yes, that's right. My God, we're still in 17. <laughs> uh, 2017 3M Teaching Award. She was the 2016 recipient of the university's Distinguished Teaching Award and the inaugural recipient of the library's on the Brock University Open Access Award. So she is an early adopter in innovative pedagogy and um, she's gonna talk to us about an open scholarship of teaching and learning database. Thank you. Um, okay, thanks, Jill. You're mic'd? I believe I'm mic'd. It sounds like it. Everybody at the back, you can hear? If I speak like that, can you hear? Great. Thank you. Um, so I, I wanted to thank the speakers so far today and the student panel because um, it paved the way. I can actually go home now because I have so many things I have to follow up on. Uh, but no, actually I want to show you an open educational resource that is both product and process. Could you use the mic, please? Oh, sure. Not on the yeah. OK, I can hear. You know, if I do that, that's good, right? OK. Um, so both product and process. And I want to talk briefly about how this started and then how it has taken off because of the involvement of my students, mostly graduate students. Um, so some time ago at another educational institution that I will not name, only because we're here celebrating Brock. Um, I did a lot of work with faculty in my, my field is scholarship of teaching and learning, so research about teaching and learning in post-secondary contexts. And what I found um, frequently was that people from disciplines other than my own of education or some of the related areas, psychology, some of the social science colleagues, didn't always have a good point of entry into the literature. They might be coming from physics and want to study what happens if they flip their classroom um, and not know necessarily where to start um, with the literature. And so the idea that came out of that was what if we could create a free online database that was snapshots of some of the literature in the field with just a hundred word written by the author, or sorry, written by the person who did the summary annotation that would tell somebody why they should read that resource and maybe provide three or four for each topic so that a person could turn to it and say, okay, that's where I can get started. Um, so the original idea with a couple of people that I had uh, students working on internships, we did 10 and sort of promoted it and said, what do you guys think? You know, is there a place for this to go? And then I bumped up into something that I find is really important to me Especially at the graduate level, we tell our students that it is their responsibility not only to use the resources that are out there, but to contribute to the conversations. And then we don't give them a chance to do it. Time and time again, as you pointed out, they write assignments for us and nobody else sees them. So I'll, I'll talk briefly about the process and then I'll just touch on a couple of links so you can see what's here. Um, students do an assignment in pretty well all of my courses, not every single one now, where they write annotations on a topic of their choice. Uh, they start with any article that they have chosen personally, so something that spoke to them that they like, and then there's a process which I'll refer to in a moment on the um, database site where they can go through and this is how they're going to pick other articles to do the annotations. Um, if they get a good mark, if they want it to be on this resource, it goes up there. Uh, what that actually means is my students do a lot of rewriting because yes, they all want their work with their name on this international open uh, website. I also have internship groups that do annotations and they do four or five topics over a term. What's embedded in that is a lot of peer review. The students look at each other's work. By the time I get it, it's pretty much ready to publish. So there's a lot of conversation that goes on. Um, so the other thing that is maybe of interest is the students have come up with the table of contents. The students generate, when they write their annotations, one of the things they do at the end is a short reflective paper, and I ask them, what are the other topics that we don't have yet on this that we need students after you to do? So this is, at this point, we're close to 100. These are the topics that are covered on this. And when the students go to the tab for the annotation process, 
um, that tells them what to do. And, and at the moment, we're recommending going to Google Scholar, use the citation counts, try and find things that are high citation counts for the topic, and then make sure that you also use the words not or critique so that you get something that's an opposing perspective as well. And at the bottom of this, the ones that are italic, blue, and bold, we have annotations. The others are topics that students have come up with that we don't yet have annotations. And clearly, we're gonna to need to add open educational resources, <laughs> amongst other things. Um, so it's been reviewed by scholars in the field. The original framework for the website was reviewed by people. Um, students continue to review it. It's sort of spun off some things of asking for other resources. But one of the things I come back to again and again is I, I really believe that the employability skills of the 21st century are about research, are about summarizing, are about critiquing what's there, and are about how do you present that to a wider audience. So in a, I guess, a mini sense, it's a little bit of an experiential education piece because they have a real audience that they're doing the work for. They engage the way I would in a community of scholars in this peer review and conversation about what's going on. And then, uh, does anybody want to call out a topic? What do you want to see? I'll hit on one if, of, of your choice. Pick one, Julia. Pick one that you can see here. We'll do one of the more recent ones, maybe. Online engagement. Do, do, do. How far down do I have to go? Ah, there. So a, a hundred word summary. This is what the three articles are. A few annotations, a couple of extra readings that Brendan O'Connor thought were important but that I wouldn't allow him to do extras because I want to keep it clean and simple. Um, and that's the intention, is just to give people, okay, I can start reading in that area and spin off from there. So I'm going to stop there. Do you have any questions? Is there anything you'd like to know more about? Please use it. The Nick students do. Since we have extra time, maybe you could tell us about how you also use Wikipedia. About how? You also use Wikipedia. In oh, you way. want me to talk about you <laughs> Wikipedia as well? Yeah, no, that's all we've been talking about. I do have the students um, go and critique Wikipedia pages uh, the way they would critique a scholarly article and then improve them, um, which scares them shoeless completely. They are terrified of the assignment. Um, and I guess one of the things we heard earlier was about the empowerment. That what the students write at the end of these is how they suddenly saw themselves as possibly becoming scholar. Um, and I've had a number of students, because I nudged them a little bit, to go, well, you know, you've done this. What about critiquing for this journal? Do you think you could be a reviewer? And they, they feel that they can now move into that because they've sort of got their feet wet with this. Um, we had a, there was a student in your class who was here earlier. I don't know if his Nick is here. He was, he was, he was really saying how much he enjoyed this, um, this activity. It was really enriching for him. But any questions? Does anybody have any? Oh, there. And while the mic's going up there, I will say the next piece is there's a limit to, for free, what I can put on um, the WordPress site. So I'm at a point now where I'm going to have to think ahead to how do we make it sustainable as we build more. Um, just a quick question about the articles that the annotations are about. Are they open articles, or are they? An, is this an attempt to kind of expose what closed articles are? Yeah, thank you for that. Today. They're they're not all open. They're um, they're online. All of them are online, but a lot of them are behind, you know, university library subscriptions. Um, one of the ways, I have in mind several ways, I want an intern for another term to now go and tag stuff, because with, you know, we have some tagging, but I think it's time to go in and tag disciplines, tag methodologies, and I want to tag which ones are online and, and move them increasingly in that direction. So I've encouraged students to use, the Canadian Journal for Scholarship of Teaching and Learning is fully open access, so we're encouraging people to move in that direction, but that'll be the next push. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nicola.